Here we are, we're gonna start. Welcome to the last session of this morning before we get you know, into the, the break and the one-to-one -one this afternoon. So we're gonna talk about blockchain and we want to understand with our three panelists today, how the blockchain can improve um, you know, the value chain, especially in our world of marine ingredient. So I'm gonna ask you gentlemen, you know, to make a short introduction, tell us who you are, where do you come from, what your company is doing. And we're gonna start UK first with uh, Francisco. Hey, um, well, thank you very much for, first of all, for this um, great opportunity to be presenting this event. Uh, my name is Francisco Aldon. I am a Peruvian by uh, birth and raised, born and raised in Peru. Um, but I'm based in London, in the UK for al already uh, more than uh, 13 years, around that. Um, and I am currently the, um, the CEO of uh, Marine Trust. Um, Marine Trust, it's the third party uh, business to business certification program for the marine ingredients. Um, what we do is basically this certification program allows uh, fish meal pro producers, you know, producer of marine ingredients, fish meal, fish oil, for example, and processors. These are storage facilities, trading, uh, fish oil refining, um, to demonstrate their commitment towards uh, responsible sourcing and production. That's in a nutshell what we are. Okay, perfect. Al, can you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting us, or me. Uh, my name is Harald Hannes. I uh, work for Lero Seafood as a sales and distribution manager in Europe, which uh, means that I try to uh, assist and follow up our downstream activities uh, in Europe, notably France and uh, Netherlands, with whatever they require uh, throughout from our value chain. Excellent. Then Eric. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm the CEO and, uh, and uh, co-founder of Orivo. Uh, I'm a chemist and a microbiologist and, a, and an entrepreneur. Uh, in Orivo, we provide the, what we call evidence-based transparency to the marine ingredient industry. We have developed a set of, uh, of revolutionary technologies able to laboratory test and verify species and geographic origin of marine uh, products such as omega-3 supplements, seafood, pet food, aquaculture feed, and so on. So companies use us either as an internal analytical tool to verify the ingredients they use or externally as a certification and a, and a proof of origin or, and authenticity of their products, either as a, uh, at a logo on, on products like, uh, oh, the background is uh, ruining yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, that's us. Excellent. So blockchain. When you say blockchain, it's like, you know, people think about, you know, cryptocurrency, uh, finance. But uh, today, you know, the topic is slightly different. We want to talk about marine ingredients and blockchain. And so to explain to our audience what we're talking about, I would like, you know, um, Francisco to give his definition of uh, how we can uh, see, you know, the blockchain in our marine ingredient context. Okay. Um, well, first of all, we know it's just the, you know, the understanding of blockchain, what it is that it's, uh, and we see it basically as a tool um, that will allow digital records of transactions to be stored in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, you know, like in blocks. And these blocks are all linked together to a uh, single list. This will allow them to, to be mutable, decentralized, they're complex, you know, secure and confidential because they use uh, encryption and cryptocurrency, and it has all of those. It's it's uh, it's being linked to cryptocurrency, as you mentioned, but the tool, the effective, you know, the blockchain uh, uh, point of it, um, it has a great potential. It has a great potential. I'm not saying it's the only the only one, and I cluster all of these as innovative traceability. Okay, so it has a great potential to bring a robust and transparent traceability to the industry. In this way, you know, with this information, we reduce also uh, the risk of using IUU material into the, um, the production of, you know, of ingredients. Um, it will help, you know, companies and, and uh, uh, demonstrate uh, the origin of the product because it will be easy to, you know, to, to trace 
um, will contribute to the operational effectiveness uh, for a business because they will know the production, they will improve from that. Um, it will facilitate the data flow on transactions you know, in a transportive manner because it's decentralized, it will use different entry points. However, this, as I see it, um, is still a concept that it's, it's um, still a bit far to reach if we look at into the concept of marine ingredients in a global scale. Because the operations, you know, the um, this is due to the nature of the activities that it has that the, the, the marine ingredient production and the trading itself that involve different parts of the world. Some of those parts, some of those parts of the world, will be more advanced than the other ones. Will have better means for that. So um, it's a great, it's a great tool. So, and thank you for for this, you know, explanation. So, well, we understand that, you know, uh, you, the specialist for the certification, we have Sven Eric for the traceability, and we have one big company that is also one customer of your services, and that will run, you know, to, to uh, implement, you know, this, this uh, processing uh, and, and this blockchain concept. So my, my second question will be more to Aral. As a big company, uh, what would be your definition of the blockchain use in the marine ingredient world? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> not sure I can define the, the blockchain for the marine ingredient, but, uh, but I can t talk a little bit of what we have done uh, in, in our company, uh, talking about more about traceability, because that's what we're really talking about here. Uh, blockchain is a technology, but but what we aim to achieve is traceability. Uh, and uh, we have a, a goal to be on the forefront of traceability, the sea forefront in the seafood industry on traceability and extended traceability uh, tracking. Um, uh, I'd say we launched our first uh, traceability system called FishTrack uh, back in 2002, um, where we combined the traceability from uh, our, our farming uh, companies uh, and industry up towards our sales ERP so that we could have a joint record. By that, we were able then to, in, in let's say, in the for our B2B customer to, to provide them with a login to our system and then could, could download the complete product CV from, from, uh, from, from this. And uh, this we're still doing today. Uh, the next steps we did was, let's say in, uh, in 2015, uh, together with our partner in Norway, Norgesgruppen, uh, one of the, the biggest retailer, um, where we launched a concept called Glalox. Uh, which uh, where we printed a uh, code onto uh, the packages of the consumer packages in the store you could find in the stores where you could go to the website glalox.no and type in this code and you would get the complete product CV again. Uh, the, cons well, the consumers would be provided the same information. Uh, in uh, 2018, we were contacted by uh, our partner and uh, one of our partners in uh, or customers, partners in, in France called Carrefour. You probably know them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they asked us if we would be willing and interested to to uh, supply their blockchain with uh, with the traceability information. So we started then, and we launched in um, January two thousand twenty, uh, where you could then for for the first time find our products. Carrefour products, certain Carrefour products in the stores uh, with a QR code, a dynamic QR code that you could scan with your phone and then have the full traceability of the product in at, at your hand, seeing when it was, where it came from, where the eggs were hatched, where it was uh, transferred to the sea, uh, and when it was uh, slaughtered and uh, packaged in, in our factories in France. Uh, and we did that again in... Um, in this year, we launched it for the same with Carrefour Belgium uh, with our smoked products produced at our factories in, in the Netherlands. So that's been a, a good experience for us in, in terms of uh, going forward in the traceability. Excellent. And uh, traceability is one important point. And uh, Orivo is focusing on the traceability, Sven Eric. And uh, would you agree with uh, Rand? And how did you uh, came you know, to this uh, idea of tracking everything from the source to the shelf and how complicated it is. 
Uh, well, it, it's uh, uh, I think uh, first of all, blockchain and all the, the, the technologies uh, that uh, that Lere and, and other uh, good companies now uh, is is um, is utilizing. It's it's very good to to, to change from hard copy papers to, to the digital uh, solution and traceability systems. That's uh, that's that's the future. Uh, but uh, we think that you still need to verify uh, because the, no blockchain is stronger than the uh, well, weakest input in, in the blockchain. So, 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 so um, we we have implemented tools, analytical tools, laboratory tools to, to actually verify the or or be a add-on to, to the blockchain. Uh, so, I can give you an example if if. Uh, uh, a, a truck of fish oil leaves the factory. Uh, as Francisco says, uh, fish oil can come from a lot of different uh, uh, countries. Uh, uh, half of this truck could be human grade fish oil and half of this could be field grade fish oil. Uh, but uh, the paper in, in the truck driver's hands could be, could say it's 100% uh, human grade. Uh, and uh, of course, either, uh, I'm pretty sure there is a, an Excel sheet at this factory telling the truth. So either this Excel sheet, if this turns uh, uh, fully digital and, and part of a blockchain, which is probably the case in, in, in Lera's production, I believe, that, that will uh, make it much harder to, 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 to make so, such a fraud fish oil truck. But also if you are able to test uh, this fish oil someplace in, in, in the value chain uh, for, for uh, feed grade quality or human grade quality uh, and detect that actually this is 50 50 it's not 100 percent it, it's a bit theoretical this example it's not the technology is, is not always able to do that but if you ha have testing technology along the the, the, the value chain to, to actually verify the blockchain then you have a really really good uh, system so um where should I start? Uh, I understand that traceability is key, you know, in the blockchain. But then uh, if, if we want, you know, to have a full advantage of capitalizing on the blockchain, we need transparency as well. And Francisco, how can we deal with this data sharing? Because data is essential. How we can collect the data, share the data, because there's also some commercial aspect competition aspect. So how can we be open, you know, and, and use this data in full transparency to adapt the blockchain and improve, you know, the processing between, you know, the origin of the product to the customer? Um, well, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of work that what you just mentioned, it's, it, you know, it can be dealt with, uh, you know, cryptography and, uh, all of these, uh, um, you know, points that mentioned before, which makes a complex encryption and stuff like that. That part can be implemented into the blockchain to create this confidentiality. So people will have a key and a special key that will be will only be able to see the data that it should be uh, looking. So that it's it's in a, it's 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 great. But in order to achieve this, to get into this, as you mentioned. It is very important to understand the data. You know, where, where is the data come from? What is the actual flow of this data? How we are, you know, what, where, how, who, what data, where are we going to find this data? How are we going to input this data? What is the format of this data? If it's paper or not, who? Who will put the data in all these different uh, parts of the, of, the, of the value chain? You know, are the definitions between the countries that they have in certain key data elements, for example, the same. That's why the, the GDST has made this uh, um, list of KDEs to try to simplify the, the definitions. Uh, you know, the, the understanding of, of traceability. So, I mean, the cryptography, uh, crypto, um, you know, the, the, the complexity of the blockchain will allow this confidentiality, but to make it work, this thing, to make it work properly, um, we need to make it accessible. You know, but this accessibility needs to start with teaching the basics of this, the basics of what it is the data that it needs to be used, what is the information, the basic knowledge for this to work. And this is what in Marine Trust we are aiming on all these uh, fish mill and all the sites. It's to 
empower them to teach them all these, uh, the basic concepts of traceability, basic concepts of, of key data elements or the innovative traceability. So then they are prepared. You know, as is Fein saying, this is the future. And you have, and this has to be available from Norway to South Africa, from you know, side to side. It's, it's, it's a complex challenge. And I will take two or three examples and I would like maybe Eral Yon to elaborate on this because uh, in the cosmetic, in the pharma, in the food and the pet food, we use marine ingredient pretty much all over, all over. But uh, as you know, uh, and I take the example of seaweed, if we buy seaweed from Southeast Asia, it's a catastrophe. And, and some, sometimes because, you know, the, the heavy metals, the pesticide, the estrogen. So sometimes, you know, the, 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 the seaweed are, are, are coming, you know, from Southeast Asia. They are transformed in, 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 in another place and they are resold, you know, on the market as, as you know, these are the place, you know, uh, products, but the origin is slightly different. We have an example also in, in, uh, in Alaska where pretty much all the crabs are fished in Alaska, they are sent to China, be processed, and they are resold, you know, in the U.S. as a as a as a as a foreign product. So, how can the customer, you know, understand the real value of this blockchain, and how the big company like uh, you around can deal with that? Because it's not just you; it's every single partner that needs to play with the rules. I think now you're getting a little bit out of my area of expertise, but. Uh... <laughs> no, but it's just to understand, you know, how a company like yours can adapt, you know, to this global challenge, because I think that it's at this stage, it's wishful thinking. We can work on traceability, but implementing this blockchain, is it something that will become a reality sooner or later? A very good question. I think the tech, the, personally, I think the, we're quite, it's quite far ahead to, uh, or at least some time where we will be able to be that to connect all producers around the world into a joint standard or, or, or a platform where you, everybody can communicate and trust the ledgers uh, or something. But uh, yeah, uh, I can only say for what we are doing, and uh, you know, as uh, since we have control of the full value chain uh, on the species uh, that we sell most of, like salmon, uh, we have full traceability on our products. But uh, yeah, I think that's that will be my answer. And, and, and Sven Erik, uh, how do you how do you deal with the other partners because you're one player in the blockchain value chain, so. How do you adapt and how do you convince, you know, your customers, your partner, your service provider to use your, your traceability system and how do you fit into this global challenge? Um, yeah, I, I'll try, and try answering that. I think uh, Haral is, is uh, his, his point is that, that he, he has his, his blockchain and he, he, he controls his, his, his uh, uh, yeah, uh, more or less the full value chain. Uh, but as an example, uh, and, and, and I think uh, that our clients, they will always own the blockchain. I, I think Harald is correct. They will, uh, and you, universal governmental or EU uh, driven uh, big system database that, that controls everything, that's, that's far ahead. Uh, but but uh, Lere has a very good blockchain. Uh, and uh, but of course, uh, and uh, they are probably a lot, uh, a lot uh, internal to put into the blockchain. And then, but then, but but again, he, he needs to uh, his his consumers, his clients need to trust on his blockchain. So I think to, to create more trust to his blockchain, he can add add-ons, uh, add-on from from third parties as us, maybe their feed producer. Uh, we work with Biomar now. Uh, uh, Helping them with, with their blockchain to, to connect blockchains together, uh, I think that will will give more credibility to to to, to the blockchain that, that Harl owns to, to give third party uh, evidence or credibility to 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 that blockchain. That's uh, that that could be something to to. Okay. Yeah. And Ira, coming back to you, and and I understand that uh, it's complicated, and I, I don't see that happening, and I agree with you. 
global you know blockchain for the seafood industry or even for the marine ingredient uh, it's a dream situation and we wish one day we can reach to that but uh, now let's focus on on each customer and each client you know partnership so how do you see and how do you anticipate on the customer reaction if we implement more automation and, and transparency in this entire value chain. So I'm going to the, the supermarket, I buy your salmon and uh, uh, I, I pass, you know, these uh, funny tools that you, many apps, you know, can tell you what you buy. Uh, how do you see and, uh, and how do you anticipate, you know, this reaction from the customers? I think it's pos generally positive, uh, but from from our experience, uh, when we launched, uh, like I talked about before, in 2015, the Glalux, what we saw is that I think some consumers maybe did it once, they saw it worked, and then they never tried it again. Uh, but the main issue we had, I think, with that one is that, that it was too complicated. Uh, it was uh, when showing the customer basically the same information we gave to our B2B uh, customers, or the, which has a quality department able to read it, it was overkill on the information. Uh, our consumer, or maybe our customers, they, they didn't have the necessary knowledge to interpret the information. So, so. Uh, so they, therefore, made, they, they probably tried it uh, maybe once or twice, and then yeah, it was neat, but uh, but but not really something that they knew how to uh, yeah use. Um, therefore, I think what we did now with with Carrefour is much more interesting, where we adapted the information. Uh, we have some talking about what we're doing, how the salmon is being produced with the dates of uh, the, the important information for its consumer, which is basically wh where does my product come from. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's what we're showing now to, together with them. So, so I think that is, I'm I don't have any data from 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 them because, it, it, uh, but uh, but I hope soon that I will get some more information from our partner like Carrefour to see how how it how much is being used, uh, b because I think uh, the more you have to adapt the message in these. Uh, blockchains or, or whatever traceability info you give to the final consumer it needs to be interpretable by uh, by everyone yeah. do you have in, in in Norway this tool called Yuka it's an app that is uh, telling you uh, if the product you know has, has a good uh, scoring in terms of sustainability in terms of natural ingredient you have this type of apps in Norway not to my knowledge no no okay I don't think so. okay that's important. And we'll come back to this in a few minutes. Francisco, uh, so I understand that and, and we eliminated you know, the, the case of the global blockchain because it's going to be impossible to deal with all the partners, the clients, the confidentiality. So what would be the added value of a, a personalized database to help you know, tracking the origin and, and improve you know, the customer relationship? And what type of uh, data would be essential for the customer to learn about you know, the origin of the product. Okay. Um, okay. On your first point with regards to the global uh, blockchain, this is if the if the uh, uh, ambition is to have one blockchain that will connect everything. And in the case, it could be many different blockchains that for the different companies. But the idea is to connect these companies that have their suppliers in another part of the world to to teach them the actual knowledge of this. Um, now, with regards to what was your question was how, how, what key data elements or what elements we would need to use to, you know, for the consumer to, um, well, this will, it's normally the origin, what they look for, but this will depend on, so on how far this consumer wants to, to, to go with regards to what information, what are the expectations as Harold, as Harold mentioned, they sometimes will be too much information that it goes escape out of their reach. Um, so there's normally about the origin, the origin of the spe of the species. You know, in this case, for example, if the if the consumer wants to know about the salmon farming, you know, the farm, it can connect from the farm the origin of the salmon to the consumer and he can tell a story. A story about the origin, how this can be, and he can create, you know, with communication, you can create the story of the actual farmer that, that you know, 
the story of the farmer, you know, Norway and how, which I saw this in another uh, um, 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 uh, discussion about how um, um, blockchain can be used as a communication to engage with consumers. Um, they will normally be looking for the origin to know if this fish or this product comes from, you know, a, 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 you know, a reasonable place or a safe place. Um, and this is normally the European mentality in reality, because if you go to another part of the world, like Latin America, for example, there are certain places there uh, that well, the majority really will think about how nice is this fish instead of the actual origin. So it's a, about the perspective of it. Um, but yes, the main KDEs that I think it will be, and they will travel a lot, is normally the origin of, of that uh, uh, um, product, the origin of, of the product, where it comes from. That is the, 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 the main thing. And then it just al allowing how to travel that and tell the story. OK. So I understand that, you know, uh, from what you all said, uh, there is a, a demand, you know, from the customer to get more transparency and more traceability. That's for sure. Uh, do you think that uh, if EU, US, North America, China get into regulation, uh, it will be uh, a good thing for the uh, for the customer relationship? And with this, uh, I would say, new regulation about the traceability will impose standards to the industry that will be uh, doable. Uh, maybe, Harald, you can answer this one. Well, I think uh, you know since what we since I've, what I've said previously is we control our whole value chain. Uh, so yes, we I think for us we are ready. Uh, we are already doing it today. For smaller producers, I think there's a longer way to go. Uh, and if you if you only control one part of the value chain from from let's say you're just producing uh, one part in the value chain, you need uh, outside help. Uh, and or some regulations or rules or common platform to connect uh, you to a bit, uh, the whole the rest of the value chain. Mm -hmm. And and Sven Erik, uh, when um, to bounce on, on, on the on this answer, when you're a final customer, you go to the supermarket, you look at you know, the sticker on the packaging, and uh, do you think that uh, your traceability system uh, can help you know the uh, to improve? The, the choice of the customer, and what do we need to do, you know, to to get you know to that point? Yeah, uh, uh, yes, so, uh, I think we can uh, help. Uh, of course, I have to answer that. But I think uh, uh, supermarket is one thing. I think we also need to see uh, some trends here. Uh, uh, of course, salmon fillet probably uh, most of that is, is sold through supermarkets. But I think more and more is sold uh, online uh, of other type of products, for instance, dietary supplements. So, so the, the, the value of a logo during this five second time span uh, at the retail shelf, that's, that's one thing. Another thing is, uh, uh, the, 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 the earlier here we had the, the, the guy from uh, uh, telling about TikTok. Uh, they, 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 they use now TikTok to, to influence uh, uh, their clients. So I think EU regulation, as Harald says, uh, the whole industry is it's not ready and it, it's, it's a big, uh, big thing. But uh, consumers will, will demand this. And it's, Ragnil said, it's all about storytelling. Uh, so, so, so I think we ha have the possibilities now to, to tell more through a QR code on a product uh, and things like that, not only these, these certification logos. So, so it's all about communicating and differentiating. And I think the blockchain and, 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 the, and the information available and, and, and the, the capacity of, of uh, requiring information through, through a single app or, or, or things like that is, is a lot easier now. So it's a, it, that that's the way the consumer will will decide, I think, and, and the consumer and, and good companies as Lere will be ahead of regulations uh, every day, I think. So so it's a matter of them trying to to translate all this into something other than the Glalax story, as you say, with too much technical things. Uh, you have to take the consumer on a virtual journey to 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 uh, the west coast of Norway. 
And, and I think that there are two different parts, you know, in this uh, in marine ingredient side, the fresh products, which are very important in terms of traceability and, and, and getting the right information. But after, you know, for the marine ingredients, you have the feed, the food, the nutraceutical, the cosmetic, and, and the traceability is more, uh, I would say, manageable because you have the ingredient, you know where the ingredient comes from, you know how it has been processed. And, and at each step, I think that there is a marker that you can track and, and give you know, the final uh, information to the customer. But for the fresh product, it's really, and we see the emergence of platform like Rooser, which is you know, dealing uh, you know, the, the, the fresh fish you know, from the, the fisherman directly you know, to, the, to the end user customer. So uh, do you think that with this deployment of new technology, it will be easier for you to keep the ends you know, um, from the farm uh, to, to, through all the network, you know, to, to, towards you know, the, the direct shell. And how do you uh, anticipate, you know, the, the needs from the different, uh, I would say, service provider at each step and what you need, you know, to improve or need to, to implement to, to be able to deliver the final product in due term? Who would like you know, to answer this question? Maybe Francisco? Okay, there were quite a few questions in there. Can you? Um... Yeah, I know it's complicated, but you know, dealing with the, the blockchain is always very uh, difficult you know, to, to explain. So my question in a very simple way, what needs, you know, what do we need you know, to implement at each level of the value chain to make sure that you know, the customer receives the good information and in no time. Um, well, you need, you need to increase the awareness of the basics of what traceability means, the definitions of the traceability. Uh, you need to provide education to the, the people that are dealing with that product to be able to, um, to understand which data is important for the objective that, you, that, the, that the, uh, the business wants to, to use the data. Um, and... Um, and also, you know, it's just basically to to automize, automatize, you know, like bringing people to uh, to bringing them outside of of the now their comfort zone. A lot of people, a lot of uh, fishermen, and they always say, "Well, you know, I always done it like this. I always use paper, you know." But this time now to to move on, to try and to try to show them, to teach them the ways of how to do it. So I think. In order to provide the customer with a good product, you need to you need to have first people working on it behind it to have an understand of the process. So you need to look after the supply chain information and what the actors within the supply chain understand of it, and everybody understand your objectives. Okay, there is a new EU taxonomy regulation requirement that is coming uh, soon. Uh, do you think that you know the the blockchain technology can help? In meeting these requirements, would like you know to answer this question. Maybe same. Yeah, as, as I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, don't know the this uh, EU regulation in detail too much. But of course, yes, it will, it will help. But as as we already have uh, discussed, I think. Uh, uh, it, it's very hard for all parts of the value chain to to, to adapt to, to to this and to to, to yeah. Uh, so I think uh, maybe um, to to have uh, certain control points, so you, you can start in in, in one end. Uh, of course, uh, to, uh, for instance, organic, non-organic. If if you want. Uh, uh, to be able to, to put organic on, on your salmon filet, uh, you need to, um, yeah, again, for us, we are developing a test to, to actually verify this. That's far easier than having all parts of the value chain to, to put organic metadata into the blockchain. It, it's, it's as easy as, uh, at the end, you need to, to show a third-party test uh, proving this is organic or not. And to understand, you know, the, the trends on the on the on the blockchain, 
around how many of your clients are requiring you know to use you know the blockchain elements at different level uh, in terms of percentage is it just a minority like Carrefour or is it a global trend that is emerging uh, I think it is a global trend that uh, that uh, consumers are uh, and I don't think I'm shocking you here uh, or telling you something new but consumers are demanding more and more information about where the product comes from that is again tran uh, translated to or uh, communicated to the the point of sale which is usually a retailer that again uh, puts requirements on us uh, as a supplier uh, so you know Carrefour has been uh, ahead of uh, the pack uh, probably uh, I can say that uh, and uh, but we see more and more of our of our customers requiring traceability data. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily a blockchain. It means that the, and it depends on what they're going to use it for. So, uh, it can be for, for reception of goods, not necessarily to 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 print the QR code on the product they have or something like that, but but to to make sure that they have the the can automatically receive the goods in their ERP systems. So. Yes, I think we uh, we do get more and more demands for uh, traceability data. And and uh, for for the small producers, would it be something that is achievable? Because I understand that your company is a big, large company, and uh, you have uh, sales uh, all over Norway, and you're selling all over Europe. But for a small player, uh, do they need you know to integrate your value chain and your your system, or is there an, an an independent way for them? go through that. Uh, Francisco, maybe you, you you can share some of your knowledge about this. Um, yeah, well, uh, with the small producers, they will have the ability to to understand to be, because it, the, the thing here will be about the technology too, that how interoper interoperable it is. You know, in this case with Harold, if he has this blockchain and uh, he will, there's a small supplier that needs to understand this. They, I, you know, I'm sure there will be a um, a way that this blockchain can be uh, included into this into this supplier by minimum efforts that this supplier will. There will be minimum requirements of input of data and everything that needs to be there. So it, I think I see it as a step step little little by little approach with these people with these uh, small producers because. The capacity is a big thing. This is a, a, an extra, a new, a new concept uh, of how to treat data, and um, and I think you know education of it will enable this effective uh, um, uh, transfer of, of of data. You know, we can have verification, extra verification. We can have that, but if the people are using the data, putting the data, don't understand what the data means, then that's you know a big problem and may not be effective. So. You know, it's 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 how it's, I think you know by education and and include and, and uh, giving them a good um, show of how it works and the importance of it. I'm sure they will shift their priorities towards that because it's also about what priorities the company will have. Yeah, and I think that the regulatory bodies, you know, will impose in in a in a few years, you know, these these standards. So, uh, what what do you see and how do you anticipate, you know, the the demand, especially from the European uh, agencies in terms of uh, traceability and, and quality control. Uh, Sven, uh, have you been working with the European authority already on this, uh, on this issue? Uh, no, not really. Uh, we have tried uh, working on the European pharmacopoeia uh, regulations, uh, more on, on, on chemical testing uh, uh, level, but on uh, not, uh, no. Uh, uh, not really. And Aral, at your level, uh, do you have a channel of communication with uh, EU bodies in terms of regulation, control, traceability, and how do you, do you cooperate, you know, with these uh, uh, agencies, you know, to, to prepare the, the future regulation that sooner or later will come to, to life? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. We are regularly uh, contacted by different authorities to, to share information on some some level, uh, EU authorities also, but that's uh, not something that I deal with and uh, I, I can't answer that directly. 
I think I think Pierre. I think uh, companies as as Marine Trust and, and IFO and, and GoEd and, and all these uh, organizations that would be the the the, the channel to to, to influence uh, authorities. Uh, so they, they, they deal with the companies on one side, they talk you know, to the European um, authorities and they try to adapt the strategy to fit you know, in, in the best way the, the, the requirement from the industry. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it, it looks, we looked at the regulations that, you know, that exist in the, in, the, in the area to try to, uh, you know, to take the relevant points and to adapt them, you know, to serve like the standard will serve as, as a tool to comply with those regulations, you know, within the realistic points. And, and um, my last question, because we're talking about, you know, a global market and some of the uh, origin is, is questionable, especially, you know, when we, we mentioned the quality of water in Southeast Asia. So do you think that we need to push forward uh, at global level to get this type of regulation and implement blockchain? Or would it be uh, business as usual and company like uh, Leroy uh, that, that can, you know, implement that will we'll, uh, we'll continue to improve, you know, the traceability and nothing will be done, you know, for the small ones? Who would like you know, to answer on this one? Um, I, I don't think, not necessarily blockchain, not necessarily blockchain. Uh, it will be uh, traceability, concepts of traceability, innovative traceability. I think that will be the. Right. So th this is the requirement from the customer. This is the type of product that you're trying you know, to implement, and this is the type of uh, requirement also that the large companies and your customers, such as Carrefour, Aral, are requiring. Are we are we okay on this, or uh, is there another way? Sorry, could you repeat the question? And... I, I was wondering, you know, if we need to work together to get you know, into this value chain and traceability? Or do you think that you know, the independent way uh, that is more focused on the development of each company will be uh, something that we can envisage in the future? Because you're doing, what you're doing is well, and you, you control you know, the entire process of traceability with your customer, but also with your service provider. Is there an, a need for you to get you know into this global traceability, uh, you know, I'd say uh, uh, way of thinking. It's a good question. Um, I'm not sure I have a quick answer for that. I think uh, I'm focus in general on traceability and. Uh, you know, food safety. I think also, you know, uh, comes uh, comes to this comes to mind. Uh, um, uh, it's good and uh, needs to be. be yeah, the discussion needs to be had and we need to go further on this. Uh, but but whether or not we need to be part of a global uh, blockchain or global traceability, uh, I'm not I'm not sure that will ever happen. Uh, or at least it's again, it's a uh, it's a far ahead. Uh... I I think that uh, the cons consumer needs when Harald has put so much effort into uh, creating uh, uh, traceability into his product and, and and securing that this is a good and safe product. The consumer needs to know that it is actually Harald's product she or he is consuming. I think that's the, maybe the, uh, where we need to start uh, uh, because that happens in the value chain. Uh, there will always be dishonest players wanting to take part of Harald's price premium and, and sell uh, products under his label, uh, which is not. So at, at that point, I think regulation can, can help a lot to get combined with the, the, the tech, detection technologies as, as uh, we are, uh, introducing. Francisco, to conclude, because you want to say something, but maybe you can wrap up because it's it's a complex, you know, uh, topic, and we understand that nothing will be easy, uh, even you know from the customer point of view. Well, they want fresh product, they want to trace, you know, the origin, but uh, the route down this uh, performance is still long. So maybe you can comment on the on the last question and tell us, you know, what will be the next step from your point of view? 
Um, next step, collaboration. You know, one of the main points is whether the blockchain or the, the traceability is small or, or big, they will have to be collaboration between all the players to have that uh, thing um, working. And I think my point here to, 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 to make this thing move forward is, is that it's, it's implementing the knowledge of it, understanding of it, understanding of the concepts, the basic concepts, to pass them through, to um, standardize the different definitions of it. So then it can be, it can be uh, uh, worked effectively. Um, and that's what you know, we are starting with in looking at the basics of the um, blockchain or innovative traceability and try to spread the word, try to uh, empower people to, with understanding of traceability, how important it is, and what the, uh, the different um, um, elements that are involved, so then they can adapt to it. So it's basically everything starts with the knowledge, I think, and then afterwards you can start in building an investment and in, 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 in tools and stuff, but you need to know your stuff first in order to invest in it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it has been complicated, you know, to really uh, get a consensus on what should be done. But I think that it's just the beginning of, you know, this new um, blockchain development. I hope that we can follow the development in a very positive way in the next years or months to come. Um, if we have any questions, you know, from the audience, I will be happy, you know, to connect you with uh, the three panelists that might be, you know, relevant for you to contact. And of course, this afternoon, I guess you have already booked your, your meetings, but feel free, you know, to connect with them. Uh, this recording will be available on the website. I'm gonna share the link with you. Thank you very much to our partner, NCE Blue Legacy, the cluster. Thank you. You heard the message loud and clear. You have a lot of work to do to implement the blockchain and we count on you. So thank you very much, everybody. And we look forward you know, to reconnecting this afternoon at two sharp you know, for this first one-to-one -one meetings. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.